Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. Starting with the tabernacle of David under Yahweh Shai, all right, a fulfillment of the throne of David, all right, being established on earth as it is in heaven. After them, you have the large multitude, the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will have mercy on, all right, the time of his second coming, all right, and uh, I wanted to uh, get into the 1,000-year period. I was questioned on it, and uh, hopefully I can bring edification and clarification through the Holy Spirit um, to build all right, up the minds of those who have ears to hear, eyes to see, all right, the hopeful elect. Now, um, I'm going to start here in Revelation, the 20th chapter. Um, in this uh, chapter, it speaks of two 1,000-year periods, all right, we're only going to tap into the second 1,000-year um, period. We have videos, okay, that explain, all right, both 1,000-year periods, Okay, all you have to type in is the two 1,000 year periods, Great Millstone, Revelation 20, Great Millstone, and i um, pretty sure the breakdowns will come up. If you have trouble finding them, just leave a message and Lord willing, we can provide you with the link. Okay, but I'm going to start here in Revelation, the 20th chapter, in the fourth verse. Okay, and um, it says, and I saw thrones, because we always speak on the, you know, 1,000 years of captivity, all right? And um, the question is, where can that be found in the Holy Scriptures um, as pertaining to us, you know, putting the heathen into captivity, all right? Now, line must be up on line and precept upon precept, all right? But it's uh, real clear, all right, if you have ears to hear and eyes to see, all right? So it says, um, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them. Now, first of all, let's get an understanding of this word throne, okay? Because remember, there was a promise directly given from the Messiah to his followers, okay? Those who directly follow him, you see? Now, we know when he came onto the earth, he had the 12, you know, plus, you know, uh, uh, more disciples, all right? But from the foundation of the earth, okay, there were 144,000, okay, linked with him in spirit, all right, and that's his ride or die body, okay, who would go into the planet Earth, all right, in, in, in various different uh, lifespans and lifetimes preaching this word, okay, and it's a reward coming into them in this time, and we'll show you that. So the, the word for thrones, okay, is thronos in the Greek, thronos. Okay, masculine, a throne seat, okay, a chair of having a footstool. See that? A footstool. Now, we understand that Psalms, uh, let's see, Psalms 101 lets you know that he who sits on the right hand, all right, will ultimately make the enemies of the Most High his footstool, okay? It says a sign in the New Testament to kings, hence kingly power or royalty, which is ultimately the throne of David being established on the planet Earth, all right? Metaphorically to God, to the governor of the world, all right? Now, it says to the Messiah, all right? The partner and assistance in the divine administration, hence divine power belonging to the Messiah, all right? And we understand that that, Authority is going to be shared, okay, with the men of the Lord. We can get that in Revelation, the second chapter, okay, and the uh, 26th verse. And to he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers, even as I have received of my father. You see, that authority is going to be shared with a particular amount of men, all right? As he told his followers, you're going to sit, all right, on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel because we're not only are we going to get the heathen in order, we're going to get our own people in order, 
Okay? So it says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my father. And I will give him the morning star, the law, statutes, and commandments written in our inward part. And it says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. Okay? So not everyone has an ear to hear what we just brought out through the Holy Spirit. Okay? So we're not worried about, you know, you people, you know, crying and squirming around and saying that that's racist and wrong. It's in the Holy Scriptures. Okay. And you, you, the, these heathen nations had no issue or no problem when their uh, kingdoms were given unto them to have us as their footstool. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Um, so lucky I could just go right to it. Give me one second here. This is the book of Psalms. Okay, Psalms, all right, 110 and 1, all right, the Psalm of David, the Lord said unto my Lord, and who's David's Lord? Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool, okay, and as you go down, okay, speaking of the, the priest after the order of Melchizedek, verse 5, it says, the Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the days of his wrath, and who is he going to do that through? Yahweh Shai, and eventually will be given uh, dominion under him in a, in a rod of iron in our hands. And we're going to judge the heathen, and we'll show you all of that as well. All right. But the main scripture going into the thrones, okay, uh, I believe Luke 22 is one of them. Okay, Luke 22. And let's see here. Luke 22, or maybe Luke 19, Luke 22, all right, and 28, it says, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, the men of the Lord, okay, and we know at the head of it is Peter, which is David, because he said, upon this rock will I build my church, and I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my father have appointed unto me. You see that? A kingdom. Rulership. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones. Judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And Israel. Once the, the rebels are purged out. Alright. Uh, uh, will be perfection. You see? And we're going to judge. Alright. Not only amongst our people. But we're going to judge and set up order amongst the heathen. All right. And that's ultimately what Revelation, the 20th chapter is speaking of. He's seeing a vision. All right. And I saw thrones, verse four, and they that set up on them as they were promised. And we know, according to prophecy, get it real quick, that that throne and that judgment, verse one, Revelation 14, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood up on the Mount Zion and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads. This is the government that is promised, okay, throughout the whole Bible, but we'll just get one more precept to establish it. Isaiah chapter 9 and 6, for unto us a child is born, all right, Yahweh unto us a son is given, and the government, all right, Masharah, all right, shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, all right, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, okay? And it, it, it says that the house of David shall be as God. So we're going to be just like him, all right? That, you know, Lord willing, we're of that 144,000, all right? We're going to have that authority that he has, all right? It says, in the increase of his government, okay, in peace, all right, and of the increase of his government, all right, and the government being on his shoulders is ultimately the high priest who who bore, all right, the um, the ephod with the twelve stones, representative of the twelve tribes of Israel, on his shoulder. The high priest of the new covenant is Yahweh, and the government will be on his shoulder. It says, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David. See that upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. See, which this we will we'll never get true justice and judgment in this world. 
So it's going to come true justice and true judgment for us. is going to come through who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Okay, and, and he's going to establish the throne of David with judgment and justice from henceforth forever. The zeal of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, will perform this. The Lord sent a word into Jacob and have lighted it upon Israel. This is not for all nations. See, you have these Christians wiggling around the earth trying to, you know, add all nations, all right, to the establishment of the throne of David. When the throne of David was based upon all nations being subdued, how much more once the Messiah comes, all right? So let's read this again. Revelation 20 and 4, and I saw thrones, all right? These thrones that were speaking of being established, the set thrones of the, 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 the tabernacle of David, man, okay? And they set up on them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, see, neither his image, didn't bow to it. Okay, they stood firm unto the end, and some of us are going to be beheaded for this word. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. Okay, showing you that this is speaking of men who stood firm. Okay, in this time, all right, and you also have men, a part of that number, as the scriptures say in Revelation, the 14th chapter, who, who, who weren't on the earth when the Messiah returned, but they're going to be rewarded for their works. As a matter of fact, you get that real quick. Revelation 14. Okay. And 13. And I heard a loud voice. As a matter of fact, I start at 12. Here's the patient and the faith of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Yahweh Shai. And this is speaking of that 144,000 body. When you read this chapter, who have the new song. Okay. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right. Blessed are the dead which die. All right. In the Lord henceforth. Okay. Yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. You see, their works are going to follow them. So if there's a member of the 144,000 who's not on the earth, when the Messiah returns, he will be put in his proper order. According to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, it's going to be Yahweh Shai and the first fruits, every man in his order. Okay. So Revelation 20 and 4, and I saw the thrones and they that set upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. For the word of Yahweh Shai and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image. Okay, this is the Allahayim being brought back together under Yahweh Shai. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. Okay, now we know the kingdom of heaven is a continual kingdom. It's not going to stop. So this a thousand year period is speaking of the first dominion, the first a thousand years. All right, we're directly under Yahweh Shai. All right, those powers, those Allahayim, those mighty men, okay, who stood stiffly, all right, are going to receive their reward. Okay, as a matter of fact, uh, they're going to receive their reward. And then ultimately, they're going to be, be joined hand in hand directly with Yahweh Shai, okay, in establishing judgment in the earth, implementing the law, statutes, and commandments worldwide, north, south, east, west. Okay, Babylon the Great will be destroyed. Okay, while we we're beamed up, changed, given new bodies, crowned, you know, celebrating. All right, and then eventually we'll come down, New Jerusalem, come down from heaven to establish order on the earth. All right, and it's going to take a period of a thousand years to clean everything up. All right, because this earth has been defiled. Now, when you go to the very beginning of things. Okay, Genesis 1 and 1, what does it say? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All right, now when you look up this word God, okay, what does it say? The Allahayim created the heaven and the earth. Allahayim, when you go to that word Allahayim, okay, because we know it's all through the order of the Most High, but how did he do it? Okay, it was through the Holy Host, the Allahayim, plural, rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, gods. 
And what does the scripture say about the tabernacle of David? Okay. In the book of Zechariah, the 14th chapter, okay, or the 12th chapter in the 14th, hold up, 12 and 8. All right. In 8. And that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Okay, and Jerusalem is a people before it's a place, and he that is feeble among them shall be as David. So all of our people are going to be mighty on a whole nother level. But it says, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And that's Yahweh Shai in the 144,000. You see, they're going to be on a whole nother level. And what did the what did the Shai tell his followers? Okay, he told them, okay, let's get it in a... Uh, John the 15th chapter in 27 it says ye shall bear witness because ye have been with me all right ye all and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning and what was from the beginning the word all right we know Yahweh Shah is the only begotten all right the only spirit created by the most high and after that came that first fruits of spirits who ultimately aided the Messiah in creating everything you see before you. That's why Yahweh Shai cried to, to, for him and us to be brought back to the glory that we had with him from the beginning. You see, the thing is, in this time, we're going to rule on the earth in those heavenly bodies for the first time ever. All right, let's get 1 John, the third chapter. In the first verse, it says, Beloved, behold, what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So we're going to be just like Yahawashai, okay, when we're beamed up into those chariots. And, and given new bodies. But from the beginning, okay, that those Alahayim created everything. And what did it take? It took a period of 7,000 years to complete it, okay? Well, directly under Yahawashai, okay, the 144,000 and the rest of Israel, the remnant, you know, they'll have their portion and, 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 and you know, part in that all as well. But the, the judgment is going to be set through. Yahweh Shai forward in the throne of David, which is the 144,000. The tabernacle of God will be with men. Okay, so as it took 7,000 years to complete everything, okay, six, you know, the, the 6,000 year period to create creation and then the 1,000 year of rest, okay, it's going to take a thousand years to get it back in order. Okay, this is known as the first dominion. Okay, so let's read this again. Okay. And I saw the thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. See, the souls have returned back to the Messiah. All right. His right or die body. Okay. For the witness of Yahweh Shai, we called hell on the earth, but here's our reward. Right. Revelation. The 11th chapter. Okay. Says what? And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that they should be judged. Okay, so a judgment is coming to the dead. Okay, and thou, thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great. Okay, because there's going to be order, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Okay, so... It says, and they were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of God, okay, because the word abides in us <laughs> through the spirit, okay, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads and their hands, and they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. So look up this word for reign, because what does the scripture say? We shall reign as kings and priests. All right, so this is the priesthood after the order of Malak Tazadak, okay, ruling, okay, reigned, Salakia, reigned, let's get that word for reigned, all right, Strong's G, 936, Masiluo, 
Masiluo. Masiluo, okay? To be king, to exercise kingly power, okay? To reign, to be a governor of a province, okay? Just like Solomon sent his 12, you know, uh, men, you know, throughout the different regions where he ruled, all right, to get victuals. Well, the 144,000, all right, the way I see it through the spirit will be sent to different parts of this world, all right, to set up righteousness, all right, in particular of you that are of that large multitude will go with them, okay, and this is just me speaking as a man on that part, all right, but we do know and understand that we're going to rule the whole earth, okay, Babylon will be destroyed, so throughout the whole earth, everything has been taken out of course and out of order, so what we're going to do under Yahawashai is we're going to subdue the heathen, all right, put 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 the you know the kings of the earth in captivity, and ultimately they're gonna build up the kingdom. We're gonna we had to throw all this concrete away, so the earth is gonna take a thousand years for us to implement the laws and the heathen to really know what we require. Okay, that's what that a thousand year period is for to be kings, not that after the a thousand year period the kingdom of heaven is done. No, but that first a thousand year period is key because. Under Yahawashai, those the, the, that Alahayim, that body who was with him from the beginning, will have you know a, a dominion under him to establish the new kingdom, the throne of David, to exercise kingly power, to reign, to be a governor in, of a province, to be ruled the Messiah, to of the reign of it says the Christians, but the followers of the Messiah. The scriptures say that one forty four followed him whithersoever he goeth, see, metaphorically to exercise the highest influence to control. So we're going to have influence. See, we're going to govern the minds of people as well. Government means to control minds. So we're going to lead these nations to righteousness and let them know what's right and what's wrong. Okay. And you Edomites, <laughs> we'll show you your, your, uh, uh, you know, part in that. So that's what that means that they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. It's not that after that a thousand years, the kingdom is done with as, what does it say uh, in Daniel? Okay, Daniel, the second chapter tells you what? Daniel 7 and, let's see here, 44, in the days of these kings, okay, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It's only going to be for the Israelites, the, the elect. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Okay, so this a thousand year period ain't the end of the kingdom. It's the, the, the establishment of the throne of David on earth as it is in heaven. You see? So it's going to take a thousand year period to get everything cleaned up. So that... During this time, you heathen are going to be put to work. Because what does it say? Let's just get a few precepts real quick on that. Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Okay. Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Okay. And 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I had mercy on thee. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually, and they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish, yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. You see that? <laughs> this is prophecy. We're not making this up. This is speaking of the, the, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? It says, for the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, all right, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious, all right, the earth, right? It says, and how is that the earth going to be made glorious through the second Adam, okay, <laughs> getting it right. You know, he got it right when he came as, you know, as a, you know, a, a, a meek, you know, humble lamb, all right, to, to as a sacrifice, but He's going to come back as an angelic force, all right? And what Adam was supposed to do from the beginning, Yahweh Shai in, in, the, in the church, okay, will, will, will do in righteousness forever. 
So the earth will become glorious through the laws being implemented. And the law is going to go forth of Jerusalem, as we read in Micah, the fourth chapter. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves at the sole of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the holy, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel, the monument, okay? And Mount Zion or Mount Sion, okay, is where the temple stood. And we're going to rule out of that land that was promised unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay, and take dominion of the whole world, okay? So this, this is going to happen, okay? Because the punishment of you heathen is written. You see? Just going hit, to hit this, okay? Psalms 149 and 4. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Didn't Yahweh say him that he's going to give them a rod of iron to rule the heathen, to execute the vengeance upon the heathen and the punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. That's salvation. You see, that's salvation. And this is what no one wants to deal with. Because this is the tabernacle of David, okay, and ultimately what they're going to do <laughs> when they come onto the earth, down from those chariots, okay? So Revelation 20, okay, and 4, and they lived and reigned with Hamashiach 1,000 years, okay? But the rest of the dead, now who are the dead? The heathen, okay? What, what, what does the scripture say? All right, uh, 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 the, the, the works of sin bring it forth death, okay? And that's what these heathen are all about. They, they, they didn't establish their kingdoms based upon life, all right? Now, there's two, all right, uh, uh, you know, there's two ways to look at the dead because, you know, when you, when you repent, all right, in this wicked world, you know, you become dead to sin, all right? But this is speaking of the dead, the heathen nations, man. As we read in Revelation 20 and, uh, uh, or Revelation 11, real quick, let's go right back to that. Revelation 11 and 18, all right, I'm going to try to get through this. And the nations were angry and I wrapped this come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great. It should have destroyed them, which destroy the earth. The accuser of our brethren is going to be cast down. So the dead is symbolic of the heathen nations. Okay. The rest of the dead live not again until the 1000 years were finished. This is the first resurrection, which is the first dominion. Okay. And let's get that in the book of Micah. The fourth chapter. Okay. We'll read the first two verses and we'll jump down. It says, but in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Yahweh shall be established in the top of the mountains, mountains of governments, okay? And it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. You see? And that's the mountain of righteousness, the mountain of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, the throne of David, okay? And many nations shall come and say, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, okay? To the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the law of shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Okay, that's what's going to happen. The law, statutes, commandments are going to go forth, which is not happening in, with the 1948ers there. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. Okay, rebuke strong nations afar off. All right, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. Okay, no more weaponry for you. You're going to be disarmed, okay, and you're ultimately going to turn into uh, 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 workers, plowshares, pruning hooks, okay? Th those are things you use to work, farm, okay? So you're not going to have the need for a Tech-9 or a missile, and all of those things are going to be taken from you, and you're going to you'll be turned into farmers. As a matter of fact, okay, you're going to build up the kingdom of heaven, boy, Okay, in righteousness, Amos 9, 
Okay? And 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and will build it as in the days of old. Now, if the tabernacle of David is being built as in the days of old, what happened when David, okay, got power? He took down and subdued you heathen. Then he sung about it. All right, in 2 Samuel, the 22nd chapter, I believe. Let me make sure I'm speaking right on that. Is it 1 Samuel 22? 2 Samuel. I want you all to read that in your, yep. David's Psalm of Deliverance. 2 Samuel 22, the whole chapter. And then read Psalms 18, 1 through 50. All right. So, the, 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 the tabernacle of David being built as in the days of old means you heathen have no part in this. <laughs> All right. And then it says when we're delivered, we're going to sing the song of Moses, which was boasting and being delivered out of the hand of Pharaoh. So it says that they may possess the remnant of Edom, all of those lands and you heathen and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, said the Yahweh that doeth this. OK, behold, the days come, said the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, all right? And the mountain shall drop sweet wine and the hills shall melt, okay? So ultimately you heathen, okay, we're gonna overcome, all right, the slave master basically, man. You see, the plowman is gonna overtake the reaper. You see, and it, the, 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 the roles are gonna be reversed. You see? So going back here in Micah 4, okay, let's just go down to the eighth verse. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. That's the first dominion, okay? So going back to Revelation 20, but the rest of the dead live not again until the a thousand years were finished. And see, this whole chapter is speaking of how Esau would be locked up and then, the, you know, the Renaissance, then he will be loosed. But we know he has an end and that end is after this a thousand year period. OK, so let's keep reading. Then we'll break that down. It says, but the rest of the dead live not again until the a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. You see, and I want to be a part of that. Blessed and holy is he that have a part in the first resurrection on such the second death, fire, war, nuclear, you know, chariots bringing fire, have no power, but they shall be priests of the Most High and of Hamashiach and shall reign. And that's how you know we're going to be joint heirs with Hamashiach because he is the priest of the Most High God, Melchizedek. Okay? But they shall be priests of the Most High and of the, the Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. All right? Now, when you go to that next verse, it's speaking of, all right, where verse three left off. And we have videos explaining that. All right, so let's read this again. Verse five, but the rest of the dead live not again till the thousand years were finished. All right, let's get the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter to explain that. That's you heathen nations, because after that a thousand year period, we know Esau is going to be destroyed, but the rest of the heathen will be able to go to their respective lands where, you know, the Lord puts them. And ultimately, we will rule over them. They will be subject to our laws. After that, a thousand year period, they will very well know what we require. As David said, so we'll read one verse out of here. As David said, okay, in 2 Samuel 22, as I just spoke of, okay, verse 41, that's, thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked, but there was none to save because ultimately we're going to judge by the laws. No other government will be in, in power at that time ever again. So no one will save you. You won't have your Edomite law code to go to, to, to say this is wrong or that is wrong. No, we're going to judge by the laws. You see, as you read down, it says strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. See, and how much more when the, 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 the throne of David perfected under Yahweh is established. <laughs> All right. So the strangers are going to submit themselves unto us. And as soon as they hear us, they're going to be obedient. 
Okay? Salakia. So we were in the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, to explain the, the rest of the dead, you know, because when you read this chapter, it gives you a list of the four kingdoms, which would reign ultimately in the world, okay, and have us in captivity at particular times, okay, and we know of that fourth beast, which is the Roman Empire, okay, the little horn that issued forth from that fourth beast is Babylon the Great, and that's where the, the Messiah returns, okay? Now, verse 9, it says, And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, the thrones of these heathen. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool, and his throne was like unto a fiery flame, and his wheels of burning of fire. This is the Most High, set in judgment. Okay, and what is he going to do? He's going to you know, send his son to destroy Babylon the Great. And I beheld then because of the words, the great words of the horn, which he spake, and I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given unto the burning flame. All right? Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed, man. Okay? Now, as you go here, it says, as concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away. All right. Because you see, when you deal with the EU, NATO and all of these different countries, you know, they have their thing going. Right. But when Yahweh returns, it's all going to be taken away from them. You see, as concerning the rest of the beast, because ultimately Esau Edom is the only nation that has no form of mercy which destroying them off of the earth is mercy, but it's, you know, ultimately they're not going to be here. As the scriptures say, they're going to be chased out of the world. You see, they're the only nation, according to biblical prophecy, that will not be here after that 1,000 year period. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their uh, dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. You see, because they won't have the new bodies. They won't live forever, but what they will do is be able to witness a righteous rulership on the earth. You see, and we can back that up, okay, with uh, Isaiah the 14th chapter, once Lucifer falls, right? Let's see here. This is when, you know, Isaiah 14, you know, verse 12 talks about the fall of Esau, all right, the Edomites, Lucifer, the light bears, all right, we have breakdowns on that. All right. <laughs> Verse 16, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Because right now all of the heathen think Esau is where it's at. But once they see us get down, they're going to start to realize how wrong they were in joining with his ass. OK, and they go, they go get they lick back, too. <laughs> all right. They go. Hey, a lot of these heathen, we go allow them to get down on you Edomites, man. OK. Hey, the scriptures say we're going to, in, in the slave trade, in Joel, we're going to sell you to the Sabaeans. See that? That's all in the Bible, man. We ain't making this up. You see? And it says, is this the man showing you Lucifer as a man? It's speaking of the king of Babylon when you read this chapter. The wicked Esau. Okay? Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof and opened not the houses of his prisoners, colonization, okay? And all of you heathen are going to pay, but this, this guy right here is going to be the only seed line that is absolutely eradicated out of the earth. It says, all the kings of the nations, all even all of them lie in glory. Everyone in his own house because the heathen are going to be placed in their own houses, on their own land, where they, where they belong. They're going to be under our authority. They're going to have to pay tribute. You see? And they're going to get simple at times and have to be judged because they're not going to be blessed with the laws written in them. But overall, they will know what we uh, require, okay? And we'll judge them when they do go off, okay? It says, it says, all the kings of the nations, all of them lie in glory, everyone in his own house. Or after that judgment, right? But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, okay? As the raiment of those that are slain. 
thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shall not be joined with them in burial because, yeah, their power is going to be buried, but you're not going to be joined with them in that burial. You see, <laughs> because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people, the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. They got to go. They're going to be evicted out of the garden. All right. There's so many more precepts we can get. Okay. Psalms 21. In nine, they shall make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. Yahweh shall swallow them up in his wrath and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee, even got the heathen to, to join hand with them. Okay. They imagine the mischievous device, which they are not able to perform. So their seed, their fruit is going to be destroyed from among the children of men. Okay, chased out of the world, man. <laughs> Let's get that. You got to go. So when you put all of those together, pretty much, that's the breakdown. I mean, there's more we can get. Um, Let's get the book of Job. Should be chased out of the world. Job 18 and 18. Okay. 17, his remembrance shall perish from the earth. He shall have no name in the street. See, Ham will be there. Japheth will be there. See, the other heathens, you know, that, that came of Shem. They, they'll, but, but, but Esau, you won't be there. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. Gone. All right? See? And Christians don't want to deal with these scriptures. I just was watching, you know, the, the vocab dealing with, you know, Sakari. And, you know, all he's there to do is try to get brothers to say something that that ultimately he can put in his highlight film and say, see, they're trying to kill us. Well, that ain't going to stop the prophecies from coming to pass. And you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. Christianity is done, son. Obadiah. Verse 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame. That's all 12 tribes. All right. The throne of David, man. All right. And the house of Esau for a stubble. All right. And they shall kindle on them and devour them. And they shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. Okay. After that, a thousand year period where we subdue the heathen. Okay, where this is fulfilled, let's get a uh, revelation, the 13th chapter, because during this chapter, he talks about what you Edomites are going to do. But. Okay, he says this in verse nine, Revelation 13 and nine, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patient in the faith of the saints who was blessed with the sword. Huh? You Edomites. The, the, the family line of Cain, which you represent that. Thugs, villains. So, so you who led into captivity, you're going to go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed. This is the patient in the faith of the saints. This is what we are uh, uh, patiently awaiting for Yahweh to return so this can all be fulfilled. So go ahead and bring your NWO. Do what the hell you got to do. Keep sending your Christians to try and deal with us in the Holy uh, uh, Spirit. It's not going to work, my man. All right. So hopefully you are edified. If you have any questions, leave them on the comment board. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be back with more. Um, there's so much more precepts I can bring out. But, you know, the, the you know, ultimately the point was made. Hey, Shalom. Giving all praise to you. Shalom.